So I was down in the hub working on my robot for robotics and I see Mr. Kokai like tinkering with this. I was like, is that a cello bow? He's like, yeah. And then I saw a piece on it and I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, well, I'm trying to figure out a way that a um, kid at the middle school can play the cello. I was like, you're kidding me, right? And I was like, do you know that's what I want to do when I grow up? And he was like, really? I was like, yeah. He was like, come over. I'll show you where I'm at. So I went over and from that point, I was like hooked in. I went home that night. I was researching things. I came the next day and I was like, Mr. Kokai, this is what I found. And he was like, all right, I'm going to guide you in the right direction, but you're going to be the one working on it. So uh, The beginnings of this story are with the establishment of what we've called the Imagineering Hub at Elyria High School. It was one of the first in the county that was created in 2016 through 2017 and brought to life only through a very generous donation through the Nordson Corporation Foundation. And Cecilia Renders here representing them today. Um, it was a, an amazing gift and enabled the foundation of everything that we were able to do to get to this point today. Uh, my name is Mike West. I'm the Makerspace teacher at Lear High School, coach the robotics team as well. I've known Molly here for probably two and a half years or so now. Uh, my job at the Makerspace is to teach kids how to open explore any kind of project that they want to explore. Molly's been telling me for a little while here, when I graduate, I want to work on prosthetics. I want to work with people that have needs that we can't meet with some, meet with some sort of cookie cutter solution. So we've been working on learning how to use the 3D printers. So through additive manufacturing and through rapid prototyping, Molly and I have been kind of working on some little stuff, but this was a little bit bigger. So she came in real quick, so I had to go through the process of going, all right, Molly, where are we at? What do we know? What do we need to know? She came in and said, I pretty much need to learn a lot because this is a little more different than just creating a box and printing it out. So we worked on grouping shapes together. We learned how to go ahead and create holes, how to work to scale, and try to fit an actual need instead of just printing something from scratch that you want to make. So that's where she comes in with all the good stuff she's got right here. From the first day of school when I met Jordan, I knew that not only was he going to be uh, a, an excellent cello player, but he could also do anything that he put his mind to. Um, and we knew that we had to do something to get a cello that was going to uh, fit Jordan's needs and, and be uh, nice and accommodating to, to play for, for Jordan. And uh, so I immediately started doing some research to figure out, uh, you know, what do we need to do to get a cello in, in the right position, in the right order, so that Jordan can play it. Um, so the first thing I did was I did some research online um, and I actually found a school uh, in Westerville, Ohio, I believe, um, that had a similar situation. They were able to 3D print a device uh, to hold the bow so that a student could play uh, with one arm or one, one hand. Um, and from that point, I forwarded that information to uh, Rebecca Cole, who's been a pleasure to work with, as has everybody uh, in this process, who's been a pleasure to work with and, and able to, uh, you know, just get everything that we need in a quick and timely manner. Um, I mean, this is this just started at the beginning of the year, and uh, we obviously we have a working product right now, so excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, my cousin Abby played the cello, and I didn't really think about playing music at the time. And I saw all my friends were like joining orchestra, so I was like, I'll just join orchestra too, and it might be fun. And then my cousin got really excited, like really, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, we have to play like all the time together. And so I started liking the cello, and then everything happened now. From the day he was born, his, nothing has stopped him. He plays basketball, soccer, he's played tennis, plays volleyball with his sister. Just like he said, he didn't think that he couldn't do it because he's been able to do so many other things that um, he just, he has that mindset and he has a good support system that loves him and knows that he can, he can do whatever he wants. It's awesome to see all these people just caring so much to put something into, into him because he's amazing. He's, on his, on his dad's side, they have a big musician side. He plays the drums with his dad too and um, now with the cello. So I just, I see him doing amazing things, inspiring people to to continue and follow their dreams, whatever it is that he wants to do. But he's got a knack for it because I wouldn't be able to do what he's doing. It is pretty particular. Um, I've been encountered with several several people with prosthetics, and just them being able to like accomplish things is just like so inspiring to me. And I feel like I want to 
make them even better so like their quality of life can be better. These people can achieve, um, one girl is playing volleyball with a prosthetic leg and she's like, Molly, there's some things you can fix on it and that just like urges me to make changes and help people out and I love the reward of seeing people able to accomplish what they want.